Hello, and welcome to Red Hat Consulting Whiteboard Video Session. I'm Ian Tewksbury with Red Hat Consulting. And I'm Carolyn Thiel, also with Red Hat Consulting. And today we're going to be talking about how to deploy OpenShift on Amazon's cloud. So, Carolyn, how do we get this journey started? Well, when you're deciding to deploy an OpenShift cluster on Amazon Web Services, you first want to start with the design. And that's because AWS actually has some features that can help enhance the functionality of your OpenShift cluster. All right, well, I really like starting with design. So let's assume I want to do a standard OpenShift deployment with a dev test cluster and a production cluster, and I want multiple master nodes, multiple infra nodes, and multiple application nodes. Um, how am I going to first do that separation of clusters in the context of Amazon's cloud? The best way to separate your clusters in Amazon is using a VPC, or a virtual private cloud. And that is just essentially a way to logically separate your instances or your entire cluster in this case. All right, so beyond the normal reasons of wanting to separate dev tests from production, what are some reasons specific to deploying the cloud that we we'll, might want to do this? Well, when you separate your dev test cluster and your production cluster into different VPCs, that allows you to configure your production cluster differently based on the different needs required by a production instance. So for example, you could use availability zones in your production VPC. All right, so I see that we still have the same generic OpenShift installation. So we have all the HA going on there, but our, our Amazon deployment is slightly different to, to use the availability zones. Uh, what are those availability zones giving us in production? So availability zones are basically just different physical locations where your resources can sit. And using two or more in your production clusters increases your high availability because if one of these zones just goes entirely down, your applications that are deployed into the second zone will still be up and running. All right, so if I've got an application that I've got deployed across both availability zones, across multiple application nodes, I can lose a zone and the application will stay up and running. But I see that all the masters are in one zone for, for latency reasons. Uh, does that mean if I lose zone one that my application stops running even though it's deployed in both zones? No, it doesn't. So if you lose the zone with all your masters, you will lose some OpenShift functions. Like, for example, you won't be able to deploy a new application. But as long as your current applications are running across application nodes in both zones, even if zone one goes down, your application will still be up because zone two is up. All right, so now that we have a design that encompasses the standard OpenShift design and all the needed Amazon parts, should I just go into Amazon and start provisioning all the different resources I need to deploy this? Well, you could do that, but the easier way to do it is to provision your AWS resources using Ansible, which is an automation and configuration management engine. All right, so we know that OpenShift uses Ansible for its deployment, but it doesn't deploy Amazon resources for us, so can you walk us through the process of how we're going to tie that all together? Yeah, of course. First, let's bring up another diagram here. So can you walk us through the example playbook workflow we would need to create to be able to spin up our entire OpenShift infrastructure on Amazon uh, automatically? Of course. First thing you want to do is use Ansible's modules to create all of your resources on AWS. And the important thing to note when you do that is that you tag all of your nodes with the functionality they're going to have within your OpenShift cluster. All right, so once we create the Ansible playbooks to create all the Amazon resources dynamically, how are we going to get those dynamically created resources back into Ansible so we can use them later on down the workflow? Well, that's where a feature of Ansible called the AWS Dynamic Inventory comes in. Once you refresh that inventory, it will pull in all the resources you just created and have them in your inventory for you to use. All right, so if we can use the dynamic inventory to refresh all of the uh, instances that are running in Amazon, how can we then use that to build the host file we need uh, to feed into the installer? Well, you can actually use the dynamic inventory to directly generate the host file that you need for the OpenShift installer. And the reason you can do that is because you tagged it with the functionality up here in this first step. Right, which is important for the installer because the installer requires that you know what are your masters and what are your infra nodes and what are your app nodes. That's exactly right. All right, so now that we have the entire workflow, what does that basically give us? Well, that will give you an entire OpenShift deployment, as many clusters as you want, as many VPCs as you want, as many availability zones as you want, anything you want, all built from nothing with just one command or one playbook. 
So if someone wanted help getting started with building their own infrastructure uh, represented as code, how could they get started on that? Well, they could get started by reaching out to their account executive to set up a discovery session with Red Hat Consulting, or they could reach out to us directly by going to redhat.com slash consulting. Thank you. Thank you.